Obviously, I was wanting this set primarily for Chewbacca. <laughs> Come on, guys, what were you thinking? What's up you guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm hanging out with my son, my daughter. They're right over here. They've picked some Legos out that they want to play with. I try and let them play with whatever they want. Some sets, I'm a little more picky because they're more fragile. You know what I'm saying? Today is going to be episode two. I did one with the Skull Sorcerer's Dungeons and the Monastery of Spinjitsu. And that one, I ultimately picked the, well, I guess you can go watch the video if you want to check it out. But today we're going to be doing the Razor Crest and the latest Millennium Falcon that you can pick. They're similar in price, same theme, kind of Star Wars, Mandalorian, obviously, same universe. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing minifigs, price, price per piece, all that, and seeing which one is the best best bang for your buck. But before I get started, put down in the comments which one you think I'm gonna pick, and we'll see if you're right. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit on the other side of the camera, move the camera down, show the table, we're gonna compare the two sets, and then at the end, we'll kinda of see the verdict. All right, you guys, so we have got the Millennium Falcon and we've got the Razor Crest, we've got the minifigures laid out in front of them. Obviously, you can see that we've got more minifigures with the Millennium Falcon, and we've got fewer with the Razor Crest, but overall, I was actually very shocked that the Razor Crest looked so big next to the Millennium Falcon. I didn't realize it until I put them next to each other, so not gonna lie, I was off on that. But I mean, obviously the Razor Crest is more narrow on the body and taller, versus the Millennium Falcon is very spread out and a little bit more flat, like a pancake. Let's start with the Millennium Falcon and then we'll go to the Razor Crest. All right, guys, this is gonna be the Millennium Falcon set number 75257. You get 1,040 VIP LEGO points. I always mention you should always be a part of the LEGO program. If you buy any LEGOs on it, just be part of the VIP, you get points, and then eventually you can use it as cash. Um, it's 1,353 pieces, ages nine and up. This is obviously one of many versions of the Millennium Falcon throughout the years. They go way back. And there's been many since. They also have micro fighters. They have the UCS. They've got many versions of it. So it is obviously a repetitive build that they have done over different parts of um, the generations of Lego being around. Uh, but overall, I think this one looks really good and the build of it and everything was nice. So let me talk about the build of it. The build was actually very satisfying to do. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, it was a lot better than I thought it was actually going to be. So overall, I would say the building experience was really good with this set. I was very happy with it. And it is a very sturdy ship, not gonna lie. My son keeps picking it up and playing with it, moving it around, and he's been loving it. And it is, again, very sturdy. All right, you guys, let's take a closer look at the actual ship. I really like the way that this can stand. It's got this, the stationary legs, so it's not flimsy or anything like that. One of the things, too, it's really nice. Everything just open, oh, it whoops. You just kind of pull that forward, you lift it up, up. So I think for me, one of the things that helps take the cake in terms of play functionalities with this ship, you can literally open the entire thing. It's very appealing to me because you can literally access all points of the ship, no matter where you want to play with the minifigs and whatnot. And to be able to open the whole thing up, I think is definitely a bonus over the um, over the Razor Crest. So again, you can just close everything up so nicely with this ship. I think that's one of the benefits. It looks really cool. You got the cool design going around the back and that folds right up over. And just like that, you've got the entire ship closed up and ready to play around or however, you know, you want to display it or whatever. So the accessibility of opening any section you want, being able to access any part inside, they have little, you know, quarters in each section that are super nice. So overall, I really like this ship in terms of play functionality. You got the cool cockpit that just plops off and you can plop it, pop it back on. So that is super convenient, super nice. And overall, I think the play functionalities with the ship, you've got all the different turrets, all the different hatches, everything is just awesome. You got the, the little boosters, the little uh, laser beams that come out the front. So let's take a closer look back here. So you got a little bed, like sleeping arrangement area, just another little coffee corner, kitchen area. Now here you've got the famous little um, the little game corner. That is super cool. I love the little printed material that they have. And even on the chairs, as you can see, they did little stickers on them. So that's really cool. Just a nice touch of detail. And over here, all you really have is just the chair um, to really look at like the, the cockpit and the screen and everything that's just chilling right up under there. So overall, again, inside looks great and was super pleased with how the play functionalities work on the whole ship. 
So again, just a lot of great little details. Obviously, they put most of the focus on the outside. I think they could have gone with putting some on a little bit more on the inside, but that is just my, again, personal preference. I think overall the ship is really nice looking. All right, you guys, so now let's take a look at all of the minifigs. Obviously, I was wanting this set primarily for Chewbacca, <laughs> come on guys, what were you thinking? No, so we got Lando, we got Finn, we got Bulio, at least I think that's how you say his name, I think it's Bulio, and then you got Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2, and I think it's D-O or D-Zero, I can't remember honestly, the little green robot guy. He's not a minifig, but obviously I'm adding you know R2 and him in it because they come with the set but you have a good amount of minifigs obviously not the greatest I think Chewbacca and C-3PO are there I think they're fine like obviously they're just good classic Star Wars minifigs um Finn okay I think the highlights of this though are are Lando and Bulio I love the head mold and everything and I love Lando's you know torso with the blue you have the top cape piece and the bottom I think overall they turned out as a pretty good minifigure selection. All right guys, now we have got the Razor Crest. This is up next. My son literally, he's been dying to play with the Millennium Falcon, so he just took it <laughs> and he's playing with it now. But we have got set 75292. Again, this is the first of its kind of the Razor Crest. Obviously this is Star Wars The Mandalorian and it is 845 VIP points, 1,023 pieces, and it's ages 10 and up, one year difference. Not sure why they chose one year difference on these. I thought the Millennium Falcon was just as difficult of a build as this. All right guys, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna move the minifigs to the side. Obviously, real quick, you've got the three minifigs and you got IG-11, but we'll go over those in a second. All right guys, so now let's take a look at the Razor Crest, the ship, just in, in general. I think it was a really good build. I enjoyed the build process. Obviously, some of it got a little repetitive just because you're building the same half on the other half and everything but I think it was really nice all right guys so I just opened up all the stuff so that's one thing that is really cool about the ship it opens up completely however I feel like okay yeah you have the little bed area okay and it can hold a you know gun and whatnot but oh, I didn't have the little the little carbonite or whatever you want to call them pieces in there um, but overall it's it's not really useful space because when you kind of close it up, I mean, it's tiny. It's maybe, how many studs wide? One, two, three, four, five. It's like six studs wide on the inside. So it's really not that great of space in there. Um, you know, kind of like the, the Millennium Falcon, there's a lot more space inside there. Obviously they have, you know, a few hundred more pieces. So I'm sure that allows them to accomplish that. So. In terms of play functionality, all you really have are, you know, the little bullets that come out of the different parts. You have the little cockpit area that isn't really anything too special. You have space for two seats is all, two seats. And that's really it. So there's not a lot in terms of play functionality. You do have this though. You got the little like escape pod, which you never see in the Mandalorian, but that is what it is. So it's it's a cool addition of like using the space. I think that was smart of them because it was kind of lacking some of it other than that, if that makes sense. But now that we kind of took a look at the build of the ship, let's close all this up. And one, one thing to note real quick as I'm closing it up, you can actually fit um, either of the Mandalorian from Triple on Tatooine or from the Mandalorian Battle Pack, you can fit one of the speeder bikes in there, one of them though, like you can fit either of them. The Trouble on Tatooine, that speeder bike barely fits in there, it's very crammed, but the speeder from the Mandalorian Battle Pack, it fits in here nicely, so that's a cool play functionality. If you pair the two, you can just drop the back hatch, drive it out, so if you pair them, I think it's really cool. All right guys, now let's take a look at the minifigure selection. We do have Mando, of course, or Din, whatever you guys wanna call him, you got Din, you got Grogu, you got Grief, I think it's Grief Karga, if, if that, I think that's how you pronounce, properly pronounce his name, and you got IG-11. So you have a smaller minifig selection, I think for a set that's 130 bucks. I think they could have added at least one or two more with it, but that was kind of a letdown for me, obviously when this came out. Obviously this was the first of all these minifigs, so it was very, you know, desired to have the set, but I think they could have really came out with more minifigs with it, just my opinion. But I think overall the minifigure selection is fine in terms of like the color choices that they did. And obviously now, you know, with the uh, Trouble on Tatooine, you have a much better looking Mando with his Beskar armor. Um, you have Grogu in that set as well. 
and then this is the only set you really have grief so that's kind of a cool he's got a cool printed torso no leg print though kind of surprised with this few of minifigs in that big of a in that expensive of a set ig11 really cool obviously he's just robot pieces but anyways that's a minifig selection all right guys so now i think you're kind of seeing where i'm heading with this and who actually won the battle all right you guys so at the end of the day i think the millennium falcon actually takes the cake in terms of better value i get it i'm kind of in a pickle there's only been one razor crest so this is the first of the razor crest it's a really cool looking build it's awesome i think overall again i like the uniqueness because again it's just you don't there's not a lot of versions of it versus the millennium falcon however i think if someone is getting into star wars and they want great play functionalities and they want more minifigs and all that i think this bad boy right here actually wins i do love the razor crest don't get me wrong i personally i'm happy i have this one because it's the first of the razor crest the millennium falcon is great the build is great it's very sturdy i love how it all opens up there's tons of functionalities with it versus the razor crest you really only have the cockpit and then the ramp but it's it's there's it's kind of it's, I think the Millennium Falcon is better in terms of play functionalities, minifigs, and all that. Anyways, let me know down below which one you prefer. It was really fun making this one because these two are, this was a tough one to pick. But anyways, let me know down in the comments which one you picked, and I will see you guys in the next video.